Tonight on Realtree Global Hunting, we're back in South Africa hunting big game. The all-new Benjamin Bulldog 357 Big Boy Air Rifle from Crosman has taken a variety of African game. And tonight, I'm looking to test its metal against one of Africa's toughest antelope, the Oryx. Africa, the Dark Continent. It's considered by many to be the home of big game hunting and an iconic destination for adventurers from across the globe. The tough terrain, the plethora of game and the challenging hunting conditions make South Africa the perfect location for any hunter wanting to test their mettle. It is here in South Africa's Eastern Cape that the Benjamin Bulldog 357 Big Boar Hunting Air Gun will take on the might of big African game. So far on our South African hunting adventure, the all-new Benjamin Bulldog 357 Big Boar Hunting Air Gun has performed beyond expectations, taking a variety of tough plains game species. We've taken an astonishing seven animals with seven shots, with each species growing in size and toughness. Now we're out again, looking to test the Bulldog's metal once more. The terrain and foliage here at Nduna make for challenging hunting conditions. Rolling hills, vast plains, deep caverns and impenetrable growth all serve as hiding places for Nduna's many inhabitants. But even when you do spot them, the cover can make it difficult to find a shot. From the hilltops, we have a better chance of spotting herds in the valleys or on the neighbouring hilltops. But getting close is never easy. If you can see them, they may also be able to see you. The animals here have been hunted as an important food source for thousands of years and they've got more than a few tricks up their sleeves. Animals such as a giraffe have evolved over millennia to adapt to this terrain. Sat in the thick cover with just their heads above the trees, they have little difficulty in observing any approach. Every animal here has learned to adapt to its environment. And that's part of the challenge of the hunt, to outsmart an animal in its natural environment. As the sun begins to drop in the sky, we've had a day of walking, stalking and glassing. There's plenty of game about, but we've just not gotten close enough. As more animals come out to feed in the late afternoon sun, we spot a herd of waterbuck. But there's very little cover between them and us. We hit the deck and make our way in as close as we can. The herd are on high alert and we can't get close enough for a shot. Before long, the sun is setting and the herd has moved on. We may not have harvested our game today, but it's been a pleasure hunting the hills of Induna regardless. As the sun rises on the Eastern Cape for our final day's hunting, we may finally have the opportunity we've been looking for to really test the capabilities of the Benjamin Bulldog. In Southern Africa, 
the Oryx prefer more arid parts of the continent, such as the Kalahari Desert. This beautiful Oryx was one of three on the estate, but unfortunately they haven't adapted to the conditions here. With the others dying from illness and the third showing the same signs, it's appropriate to remove it from the estate to prevent further suffering. It's an essential management task and key to the success of the estate and sustaining a healthy game population. This oryx lives alone on the estate. However, there's always a variety of other game animals in close proximity. Being a herd animal, perhaps it's taken solace in cohabiting alongside other species. This oryx has been on the move all morning. After watching it for some time, we decide to head through the thick stuff and cut it off on the other side. We get down low and play the waiting game. We crawl into a position and rely on patience. Soon enough, the oryx begins to wander our way. As it stands broadside and out in the open, I pick my spot. We can immediately tell from the reaction to the shot that the placement was perfect. What a handsome animal. Look at, look at the beautiful colouring on there. Yeah. Absolutely phenomenal. Now, not a huge trophy by any stretch of the imagination. This, look at all these. Why is all the horns all frayed like this, Gavin? It's how they fight to, with each other, you know, they yeah. tear it apart and that. Just, and if you can look at the hair now, you yeah. know, you, that's how you determine when a oryx is dead, is when the hair comes out. Yeah. It's one of the... the well, I can definitely tell that it was dead because it fell over and it stopped breathing. Uh, so this is the, the, the animal we, went, we needed to pick out. Obviously, he's an old animal. Uh, he's been singled out for the cull. He's on his own, the fellow oryx. Um, have passed so fortunately when you get to this stage of life uh, there's only one place for you which is a butcher shop uh, however we still needed to make a plan so coming down through the grass seeing that it was uncomfortable towards the cover and then just cutting him off letting him graze towards us 300 yards 250 200 yards and then when he finally got to around 50 60 yards then he could sense yeah. there was something there and even in even all camoed up obviously we are kind of stick out against the uh, against the grass but that actually worked to our advantage because he got a bit um, inquisitive he wanted to know what those little lumps were in the grass yeah. and he kind of quartered around us gave me the shot straight on the shoulder as you can see here now the thing with an oryx is the vitals are quite far up uh, in their body so normally what I'd like to do is for him to put his leg forward and then um, put it in the soft spot behind his leg when it's extended. But unfortunately, because he'd come around so far, I'd had to spin the rifle, use the night sight as a periscope, and kind of shoot it to my right out of my shoulder. But it also limited my arc of fire. But as it happens, once again, the Benjamin Bulldog, exactly where I put those crosshairs, it sent that 357, 145 grain nozzle bullet. And as you saw, the impact was immediate. That has gone through the front leg, certainly the meat of the front leg, probably the shoulder from the way that he was yeah. picking his leg up. And he went down in 20 yards, 25 yards. So very quick, very quiet, very humane, and with the least possible disturbance to the surrounding animals. So what's probably happened here, it's gone in through the shoulder, taken out the vitals, and it would have taken a deflection on the way through because it's come out, um, that'll be way behind its... Um, diaphragm so it'd be interesting to see the path of the bullet and what actually yeah. deflected it but either way the animal's down quickly quietly and without any fuss and another phenomenal performance from the benjamin bulldog you know i thought they got it right with the rogue we'd taken some big game with that uh, rifle but this is really is resetting the boundaries and the capabilities of modern big bore air guns so gavin thanks again for a great hunt yeah and now we've got now we've got some work to do after a day roaming the hilltops of Anduna in true safari style, we change tactics and head out with a specific goal in mind. This time, we used modern stalking techniques to harvest a specific animal with a single Nosler-built 145 grain Benjamin Extreme bullet. So this is the Oryx that we've just taken. Uh, as you can see, it's fully dressed out now and skinned. 
and we're going to have a nice close look at the entry and the exit and the performance of the bullet on the inside of the animal. Now, as we can see, this is actually a fairly big animal, even though for an oryx it's, uh, it's, it's not huge, it's reasonably small. Now, as you can see here, here's the entry wound, exactly where we said it was, smack on the shoulder. And as we said before, with an oryx, all of the vitals are pretty um, far up the front. Um, so we needed to take it on the shoulder. I'd have preferred it to be behind the leg, but then you wouldn't have got the vitals. So that's absolutely perfect on the way in. As we can see, it's cleared through a rib on the, on the, uh, on the way in, and then it seems to have taken a deflection off that rib because it's, it's hit the back of the rib. Still gone straight through the heart, and then it's exited here at the back of the rib cage. So with it, it's gone through the front, through the heart, and out the back of the rib cage, but still in the diaphragm. So it hasn't affected any of the meat and it hasn't punctured any of the, of any of the stomach. And as you can see here from the heart, it's pretty obvious you don't get much better shot placement than that. Um, so that would have come through here and then out this side here. Just taking out the side of the heart, but that's enough. And as you saw, the animal went straight down. So there's no messing. It didn't know we were there. It's kind of a little bit inquisitive to see what the lumps were in the grass, but its blood wasn't up. So when I took the shot, it went straight down. And another dead, perfectly humane, nice and quietly killed oryx and some more meat for the chiller. So Gavin, thank you so much again. Yep. A great hunt and a phenomenal performance once again from the Benjamin Bulldog. The Benjamin Bulldog 357 from Crosman has performed flawlessly in South Africa and every animal has been taken with just one shot. Its innovative design, compact dimensions and outstanding ballistic performance means that the Benjamin Bulldog 357 sets the new standard for big boar hunting air guns across the globe. No other air rifle on the planet can match the performance of the Benjamin Bulldog 357. All hail the new king of big boars. To find out more about the incredible Benjamin Bulldog 357 big boar hunting air rifle, visit crosman.com. To find out more about Realtree camo products and to join Realtree's global family of outdoors men and women, visit realtree.com. Follow the links below for more amazing videos from Realtree Global Hunting. Be sure to subscribe to Team Wild TV for the very best hunting videos on YouTube.